So you now know how to make an American flag with natural wood stars and natural wood stripes. But what if your customer wants painted white stripes and painted white stars? How would you go about it? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you the process that I would go through to do that. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. In a recent comment, I received a question on how I would go about creating a flag with painted white stripes and painted white stars. As I've mentioned in a couple of other videos, there is a process that you have to go through before you actually start carving. You have to think about what is the process or what are the steps that I'm going to do first to be able to achieve the final outcome. And one thing before I get into it, guys, there was some fraying in the pocketed stripes. I was using scrap plywood and I think that may have been an issue or a factor on why I had this fraying on the on the pocketed stripes. Had I used the edge glue panels that I typically use, I don't think I would have seen this. So keep in mind that this is not a project to be sold or to be hung up. This is just simply to share with you the process that I would take to be able to achieve the outcome. If you guys are getting value out of the channel or out of this video, make sure to like the video or subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And if you want to help out a little bit more, you could always become a patron through the Patreon account or also pick up some merch such as this shirt. All right, guys, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, guys, so jumping into Carbide Create, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is set up your job. So click on this gear and then enter the dimensions of your material, the stock thickness, and all the other details of this particular material that you're using. Also import the file. In this case, it's going to be an American flag and resize it accordingly. What I decided to do was make a shallow pass on these stripes to be able to see where my union is going to end and where my stripes are going to begin. So what I did is I created an advanced V-carved toolpath with a max depth of 0.01, very shallow, just to be able to see where the union is going to end here on the side and down here, down low. So let me go ahead and show you how I set that up. Hey guys, just jumping in here real quick as I edit this video, I wanna explain a little bit more as to why I chose a 0.01 max depth for my initial pass for these stripes. My thought process was that I want the vinyl to lay as flat as possible and when I come back to clean up the stripes, I want the end mill to travel the shortest distance possible to meet that material. So if my initial pass was deeper, my end mill would have to travel or cut through the vinyl first to then meet the material. And I didn't want to have the end mill cut through a lot of vinyl. I figured that it might tear out that way. Uh, so I just went with a very shallow initial pass. Make sure to have your stripe selected, select tool paths, click on advanced V-carve, use current selection, enable the pocket tool. In this case, I use my down cut bit and it's going to be the end mill 1 8 80, 90 for plunge and feed rate, RPM at 18,000. I came in with my 60 degree V bit at 80, 90 as well, RPM at 18,000. My max depth is 0 0.01. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Hey guys, it came off the CNC and it has a lot of fraying here on the pocketed stripes. Had it been pine, I don't think I would have had this issue, but it is plywood. It's a scrap piece of plywood that I have. And so I think that's the cause of this particular issue, but we're gonna go ahead and continue with it just for this example to show the process of what I would do. So let's just go ahead and continue with the next step, which is going to be staining red and blue. This is your first time seeing a flag being made on the CNC. Don't worry about the white stripes being stained red. We're going to come back and clean them up with the CNC in a moment. Also, if this was a flag order, I would use painter's tape to create sharp transitions from stripes to union and union to stripes. Since this wasn't being sold, I didn't care if some blue or red got into the areas that they weren't supposed to. After I finish staining, I like to use my torch to help dry the stain faster and also pop the grain on the union and the red stripes. With the stain dried, I sanded the flag with a 220 sanding block and added two coats of polyurethane. They weren't thin coats, but they also weren't thick coats either. It's very important to sand the flag before applying the polyurethane because you want a smooth surface for the oral cow vinyl to adhere to. After the second coat of polyurethane was dry, I gave it a quick sand and then applied the oral cow vinyl. The vinyl went on nicely on the flag except the pocketed stripes. Since I had those pockets, the vinyl wouldn't lay flat in those areas and I had air bubbles underneath. At the time, I wasn't sure how it was going to carve, but you'll see in a moment that I didn't have any issues with the vinyl cutting. Let's jump back into Carbide Create and let's set up our star toolpath. Okay, so now that my stripes are completed, I came back into Carbide Create and I set up my toolpath for the stars. As always, it's going to be a V-carved toolpath. So have your star selected, 
click on V carve, use current selection. We're using the 60 degree V bit, 80, 90 for plunge and feed rate, RPM at 18,000. And my max depth is going to be stock bottom. So now let's go ahead and run that toolpath. As you can see here, I had no issues with the 60 degree V bit cutting the vinyl. I was very pleased on how it turned out. Let's jump back into Carbide Create and set up our final toolpath to finish off the flag. So now that the stars are completed, what I wanna do is I want to disable this stars toolpath. I wanna come back over here to the stripes toolpath by right clicking and I want to edit the operation. And in this case, I first increased the max depth to 0 0.04, but that didn't remove enough of the Oracle and it left some behind. And it actually didn't even remove some of the top layer of the material of the wood actually. And it was still kind of charred. So what I ended up having to do was coming back into Carbide Create and changing this to 0 0.06 inches. And that is what actually removed the material and the Oracle for me to then paint the stripes. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Like I said before, the original max depth at 0 0.04 did not remove any of the material to clean up the pocketed stripe. And that was okay. I simply increased the max depth and carved deeper. I leave these moments in my videos just to show you that my carves aren't perfect. And also the fix is usually very simple. So if you run into so-called issues, don't stress and use the knowledge that you have to find the solution. If you're cutting through vinyl, you have to use a downcut end mill. I've used an upcut end mill in the past and it just tears up the vinyl. I like how the downcut end mill pocketed these stripes and how the 60 degree V-bit cleaned up the edges. I think if I had used pine, the V-bit would have cut the vinyl even nicer on these edges, but even so, it came out pretty good. I have white paint all over this flag now. Ideally, I would have used spray paint, but I don't have any, so I just used some bare marquee white interior paint. And even that was kind of the end of it. And it was kind of thick at first. So I watered it down and it, you know, it was really watery. So hopefully um, nothing goes underneath the Oracle. We'll see how good the Oracle holds up. I let the paint dry overnight and came back the next morning and removed the vinyl. Overall, I was very happy with how it turned out. There was some bleeding, which I tried removing with a flathead screwdriver. Do not do this. Using an old rag with water and some elbow grease works so much better and it doesn't scratch up your flag. Although this flag isn't the prettiest, the purpose of this build was simply to show you the process that I would recommend you to follow if you need to make a flag with painted white stripes and stars. If you guys like this video, make sure to take a look at the ones on your screen. I think you're gonna enjoy them, but also add value to your projects. Thank you guys and I'll see you there.